Hi everyone, welcome back to the introduction to programming using Java and also welcome back to David Dojo Academy. Just to change the order a little bit and we are going to continue with parse. Since we know a little bit how it works, uh, it's, I think it's time for us to increase the complexity. In the previous exercise, we did here the times table or multiplication table for the number 5. But now we should do an exercise that will do all the way to, uh, let's say, well, we can use 10 or 12, it doesn't matter. Once we create an algorithm, we can do any number of times table that we, we want. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. So we have to achieve the, the times table up to 12, and we have to understand how we are going to create an algorithm for that. So if you look at what we have here at number one, or like we used the number five, we have something that is always changing and something that is always fixed. So in this square, uh, rectangle, or whatever this is called, we have one, 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 one being repeated uh, like 12 times. And here we have two, 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 and so on. So basically we have to fix one number, then we have to iterate over it 12 times, and then we have to move on. And then we have to repeat the process of holding the number and then iterating over again uh, 12 times. Hmm, how can we achieve that? Let's wait here then another exercise. Java class exercise four zero uh, three. Then again, PSVM. So I don't need to input any data so we can start directly with four. So let's let's try to at least for me my brain works a little bit differently. So I prefer this being on the left side and then on the right side, something that we will increment. So in the end, if I had to type this down, it would be something like this. One, and then two, and so on. So it would be a bit better for me to understand if it was written this way. Okay, so four, I know that I have to start with one. So I starting with one, all the way to 12, so i less or equal than 12, and then going one by one. Okay, so do the exercises in small parts. Now just print i, and then once it executes, you celebrate because you kind of have the one of the exercises partially done. But then we have a problem here. What's the problem that we have? The problem is that we need two things. One that will keep iterating over it, and another one that will keep uh, steady. Now, how can we achieve that in a way that will be automatically done for us? Now, you have to remember some concepts. First is that we have scope variables. What does it mean, scope variables? That this i will be the same all the way until you start this for again. So basically, everything that's in between here and here will do not change the i unless you tell the, the i to, to get another value. But if I just press Ctrl D like a lot of times here and I put a breakpoint and I press Shift F9, you are going to see that it doesn't matter what I do, the value of i will always be 1. Hmm, interesting. So you are saying that this block that we have here, just remove the breakpoint and press F9. So this block that we have here, the i will be fixed until it comes back again to line number 5. Hmm, interesting. So what if... What's going to happen if we put another 4? Hmm. So this is called nested 4. And then we are going to do the following. We cannot use i again. Why? Because we are inside the scope of this 4. So if I try to declare i again, it's going to give us a exception saying, hey, guys, come on, this already defined the scope. So this is where I said sometimes they use j. I don't know if there is a meaning, but probably it's because it comes after i. And then we do the same. So if you look at the table, 1 to 12, and then 1 to 12 every time. So basically, i and j will have to do the same, not from 0, not, but from 1. So basically, the condition is the same, but instead of i, it should be j. Hmm. Now, this is getting a little bit complicated. So let's try to understand what's happening here. First, 
you put j uh, i here and then let's print j down below and let's execute just to see how it works so by executing if we go all the way you can see okay we have one if you are not sure how it works just add something like this i'm going to add here i and then i will add this and i will copy and i will add to j so it will be very easy for us to understand exactly which one is i and which one is j okay so if you go all the way up you have i one and then you can see j one all the way to 12 and then i becomes two so this is basically everything that we need to do to get this working we know that the i will not increase will not increment by one until you reach this but what happens when i get to this point i'm starting another for loop and this for loop this j will not change what until you get to line number seven so basically the j will do the counter so i'm saying from one to twelve just stay here in this block and after this block's finished then it will come to line 10 and then it will come to line five again and only then i will become two we will increment by one so let's press uh shift f9 with the breakpoint here and let's press f8 to understand what's happening so basically we have here i h1 and then you press f8 now i'm starting another block another for loop inside this for loop so basically until i get back here it's not going to change but j is the same thing it's going to change only when you get here to this for loop basically i will be stuck here until i comes back so it will i'll press f8 you see i is one j is one and it will keep going you see it will not get out until it get this condition evaluated to false so f8 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 and then it will come back okay now it finished this j technically died and then you see we don't have any variable here because the scope of this j finished right here and now we are within this scope so if i press f8 again now we are at two i has two in memory and then the j will start all over again all the way from 1 to 12 so basically this will keep repeating 12 times for for i and for each time we are going to go over the j 12 times so you can just remove this breakpoint press f9 and now what do we have to do uh, maybe just print this a little bit better like we have here so how can we do that basically uh, we can come here remember you have always access to variables that has a broader scope in this case from my j from the for loop where i have j i have access to i but from um from i i don't have access to j so if i try to have here south j i'm going to have a problem because j does not exist uh, just yet and if i try to use below i also have the problem because j died after this war finished completely okay so what are we going to do here i'm going to add here i x j it's equal to i x j not x like this x like this Control alt l now Control shift f10 and uh, there you go so we, well it didn't look pretty good so let's uh, just fix this a little bit i mm, let's just have the the numbers now let's keep like this it will not look very very pretty but so we have here yeah, and let's not, let's remove this i but we need to make this a uh, string that's why i'm attaching here the i and then i'm going to attach here the x and then plus maybe i don't have to do this one let's see like this control shell control shift f10 oops uh we're missing here the plus sign and then here the equals wait wait open close and then this one 
There you go. Remove this plus from here. And then make this. There you go. Okay, so now let's execute. We have i, and then we are printing the literal x, and then j, and then equal sign, and then the result of the multiplication. Control Shift F10. And there we go. So it looks like we have it working. We can remove this guy right here. Control Shift F10 again. And there you go. So you have for 12, you have for 11, and so on. If you want to. Make it a little prettier, just add here something that will keep them separate. And now, there you go. So I have each one of the multiplication table up to 12. Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but once you can grasp the, grasp the concept and you can write it down in a, in a piece of paper or even explain to someone how this works, just we're going to nail it pretty fast so i hope you enjoyed see you in the next video bye bye